Hey traders, welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Akil Stokes, Forex trader and trading coach over at tier1trading.com. If you've been following the podcast for some time now, you know that we cover a handful of topics, mostly trading related, but we also talk more about entrepreneurship in general, self-help, positivity, motivational, productivity, and even even though the majority of the time is spent giving my personal story, meaning telling you how I overcame the struggles of becoming a, or of being a consistently struggling trader to a consistently profitable trader, Every once in a while, I like to share the stories of others as well, and that's what we're going to do today. You see, each and every Friday over on the Tier 1 trading platform, we host an accountability session, and it's an opportunity for the traders that we work with to come in and share their experiences with the group. We are extremely big on the community aspect of trading. This has really been the missing element in education. It's tough to do because typically public trading forums become toxic, but we took a leap of faith this year. We, we trusted our community. We trusted the quality of people that we work with, and we were able to set up a community that runs on its own, meaning it polices itself. It is a serious professional community. If you come in the wrong way with the wrong approach, uh, trust me, you won't last long. The people there will let you know about it. And it's been an amazing uh, experience, and with the accountability session, what it allows our traders to do is really come in and introduce themselves to the community, really hold themselves accountable. They come in, they share their goals, they share their story. It's a, it's a nervous uh, kind of revealing time, but each and every member that has done it, um, after the, the nervousness and the fear, of course, they've come out of it saying they feel so much more comfortable being honest with themselves, being honest with the traders that they work with on a daily basis, and they feel this extra pressure and motivation to really put in the work necessarily, uh, necessary to become a consistently profitable trader and even take their trading to the next level. Today, I'm going to share with you a, uh, an episode from one of my favorite members on the site. This is a uh, let's, let's give a little bit perspective. So I've, I've been coaching traders for a long time now, right? Years and years and years. I've, I've worked with over, you know, tens of thousands of traders and every once in a while, there's one that is a kind of a mystery, a, a question mark. It's, you know, everyone learns a different way. And every once in a while, there's a student that kind of stumps you. And, and this was one of them. Uh, but she is very hardworking. Uh, she made me work my behind off and made Jason Greystone to work our behinds off to really teach her the right way. And, and after, you know, basically a year of battling and fighting and going back and forth, um, I'm really excited about the path that this trader is on now. And she's become an excellent member of, community, of our community, really helping out many of the newer traders. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's hear the story of Gabby. All right, Gabrielle. Just um, just give us a brief sort of rundown of, of why you got why you started even looking at the forex market and how you got involved. Yeah, that's a fun story actually. It was, um, I think it was in 2015 um, where I started to realize that money in the bank was starting to become worthless more and more. The, the interest were dropping like crazy and I was thinking, man, if this is going to continue like this, then we have to pay to have money in the bank, yeah. right? So that was the point where I decided to go from a savings account into investing, right? Um, so I um, contacted my bank and uh, started to find out what kind of um, well, uh, packages that they offer for investing and what was aggressive and what not and well, I knew nothing about investing at all, right? Um, so I opened up an account there and um, basically the reason why I um, decided to gain more knowledge on technical analysis had everything to do with um, me having more control over um, my portfolio that I had at the bank because the only thing that I had control over was how much of a stock or a fund uh, would be in the portfolio for an X period of time. But 
the information that I got was pure fundamental. Mm -hmm. And to me, that felt like, yeah, but how am I supposed to know what's going to happen next then? So I started to, to look up things on that. And before I knew it, I saw things like charts. And I'm like, okay, this technical analysis thing, what is that? And how do I gain more knowledge on that? So um, I uh, contacted my bank again to see if there was anything that they could provide me with or advise me to do. And um, that was pretty much when I uh, found out that this entire trading thing when it comes to uh, technical analysis was basically uh, a big no-no. At least that was over yeah. here in, in around that time. So at that moment I let it go. Um, and it was in 2016 when all this Brexit stuff was was happening <laughs> that I thought oh crap yeah you know I, I got to do something because this is not going this this can go crazy you know um, so uh, that's when I started to look for opportunities to um, get educated but never to become a trader that I never had the goal of becoming a technical trader. I just wanted to have a little bit of knowledge so I could make better decisions in, um, in my portfolio, which is being traded by the bank, right? Sure. Um, and, um, well, I Googled um, and I found things like candles and Bollinger Bands and before I knew it I was totally lost and overwhelmed and the biggest mistake that I made right after was YouTube. So <laughs> <laughs> I found YouTube and then I found helicopters and Maldives and <laughs> uh, cocktails and uh, flashy things and million dollars and I'm like yeah right, right? If I can make about 15% on a year, then that is even more awesome than the bank provides, then I am happy, you know, yep. so I don't have to be a millionaire, that doesn't sound right to me, and well, it was pretty, pretty fast after that that I found Jason Stapleton on YouTube, and I was like, whoa, that guy just takes no bullshit, right, he just says it as it is, yep. he's straightforward, and well, that was intriguing to me, so... Night after night, I was laying on my couch with my color pencils, watching the video after video, and I was like, <laughs> "I, I, I can do this. I can, I can do that." So I loaded up a chart, and five minutes later, I'm like, "Okay, I cannot do this <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet, I'm gonna because this is actually pretty cool stuff." So. Then I ended up with the website, of course, and I saw these uh, courses, and I'm like, "Yeah, but." I don't want to be a trader. This is for people that have knowledge on that, right? I know nothing. I've never seen a candle in my life. Um, so I'm like, that, that's not for people like me. That's, that's, that's for Wall Street people and people that have um, papers in economics. That's, that's not for me. I don't yeah. need that. I just need a little bit of knowledge. So um, I had a call with um, Charles and I had another call and another and another because I was so damn critical um, I do not just buy stuff because I think that I need that no I need to know that I need it right so I decided I need to sniff these guys a little bit out more because they look cool they sound cool but who knows are, are they real you know so I needed to sniff you guys out and um, I joined the live rooms and when I uh, saw Akil coaching and the way that he did, I was I was hooked on the spot. Um, I gave it another day and then I signed up for the course and I was like, okay, let's do this then. If, if I, if I want to take this seriously, then, then let's do this. Um, so I started the course and the first thing that frustrated the F out of me, that was that I know that now, but I didn't know that at that time when I started the course. It was the way that I think, uh, basically with everything, is I, I think top-down. Sure. And 
when I started the course, which is way different than it is set up now, because the way it is set up now is so much better. It is, it is so on a silver platter, right? And the way that I got it was one big chaos, here you have it, you know? <laughs> and you learn step by step, brick by brick, and it frustrated the shit out of me, because I was learning all these cool little things, but I had no idea how to put it together or how to eventually get to the top down, right? To yeah. how can I blend it, this all in to what I eventually want to do? So then the thing came, what do you want to do? How, how do I know what I want to do? I don't know. Let's try it all out then. So <laughs> I decided, let's go from step one to the end, and I go with the frustration that I cannot already see where that is going, so let's just go then. And I did it step by step. And I simply refused to move on to the next step before I totally mastered that step because who knows if I'm going to need it later, right? So that's how I basically went through the course and I'm still not finished. There you go. I'm still not finished. I'm 18 months in now because I started in the week of bloody Brexit. That is fun to start your first week if you never saw a candle in your life before and then you're like, okay, Akil, you make perfect sense in this video, it makes perfect sense in the practice, and then I go into the live trading environment and it was crazy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm too stupid for this, I don't get this at all, help, help, I need to practice more. So I practiced the shit out of it. and. Akil said, you have to take about one week for each section, that's normal. So I said, okay, I do two. Yeah. And um, eventually I came to the point where it clicked and um, that's when I fell in love with technical analysis. I mm. totally fell in love. And at that point I still didn't realize, okay, this can become something to become a trader. So I went on with the course. And um, at, a, at a certain point, you come to meet some pretty nasty demons mm -hmm. um, that you have to conquer, and, and again. And um, it's, it's quite a battle to, to come out uh, of that entire process. But when you do, and you have numbers, and then realization hits you that with just a small portion that you've done, that to me is like just 10% of what I'm about to do, right? Yep. Um, already puts me in the position that I wanted um, 18 months ago. Yeah. Because yeah. I said back then, if I can make about 15% a year, then I am... Um, pretty happy because that means that I can afford to suck even and perform better than the professionals at the bank. I mean, that's freedom. Yep. No that's matter true. how big the account it is that you trade, no matter if you are going to do this professional or um, like me, I still have no clue what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to focus on my focus and, and grow my uh, life trading um, and testing the shit out of everything, and I will see later, right? Um, I still cannot see the top down, so I will go with the flow, and I will just do my stuff, and I just realized only this year, starting January this year, that I was slapped in my own face with the work that I did, and I'm like, holy crap, I can trade. Yeah. Let's trade. Yeah. So that's what I um, started to do from January this year in absolute baby mode, right? So yep. I, I started off with one strategy on one pair with two micro lots only. And um, it's so awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. I totally love this. It scares the shit out of me. But yeah, this is, um, I think I'm so blessed with knowing totally nothing about Forex or trading, I mean, Forex, what, what, what's that? That sounds dirty, right? 
I had no idea what it was. And fundamental news and stuff like that, I stay far away from it. I do not even look at it. I just look at my charts and I'm totally drilled by you guys. So um, I think that is um, bliss. I've never lost a dollar in the markets. No, that's not true. I lost six dollars by testing my uh, my live account. Okay. Um, push the buttons and see if it uh, if it works. Um, so that is how I lost six dollars. Um, but yeah, I think I'm a total lucky bee. Excellent. To, um, to have known nothing and be totally coached and educated by you guys from scratch because this actually proves that you do not have to be um, brilliant, smart um, and you do not have to have um, an education or degree in e economics and um, you do not have to have years of experience with this. You can be drilled from scratch and become independent and successful yeah and yeah if it was down to it if it was down to intelligence i wouldn't be here <laughs> yeah uh, uh no I'd I'm, say not yeah. Gonna, I'm not gonna say anything now <laughs> 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 i'm gonna shut up now end of monologue your turn <laughs> <laughs> so just so just uh recap there then um you say that you started trading live on january the first you're, I've seen some of the emails you've been sending me and, and I've seen your analysis and, and you've been really fine-tuning that thing. Um, am I safe to say that you're trading one strategy still, but you've, you've tuned that thing up to around 15 to 20% a year on one um, strategy? Uh, for now, I have tuned it up with money management. If you... Um if you can, I can show it if you want. You mean you just you just had a conversation about transparency, right? So if 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 you're okay with it, I'm fine with showing work if you want. Sure, let's let's do it. I'm fine with that. If that proves something, um, hold up. I need to click away some some things. Oops, we won't ask what that is. Otherwise, that can be used against me. <laughs> uh, let me click away stuff that is not needed. Let's start with this sheet then. Um, I started with a sheet that only had um, like uh, this, right? Uh, entry date, entry time, and I started my backtesting. I'm like, okay, I need to track more. Mm -hmm. uh, so I this thing... Be came a little bit bigger pretty pretty soon and my backtesting uh, had to be redone constantly because what about if I do this yeah, and yeah. what about if I do that and hmm I don't know I have to track that all so I started to do that and instead of just the basic stuff that you put in there uh, with also <coughs> pips and uh, the calculations um, I want and just to just know. on that, just on that, Gab, it's a bit like a catch twenty two. It's like chicken and egg, isn't it? You, you, I think people get scared to start because they think they've got to have so much information to start testing. But really, you've just got to accept that you have to start. You're going to restart it a few times, and then once you've got all the ideas, then you can roll it out across multiple markets. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that frustrated um, was pretty frustrating to me because I didn't know that uh, I knew that I would have to fine-tune some stuff and yeah uh, but I didn't know that uh, especially when you take your time and you learn so much in between and you think oh crap now I gotta do it again <laughs> so that resulted that uh, especially this bear and and me well we've we've been dating quite a while and I'm, I'm so <laughs> sick of it right now but yes here I am fine-tuning it again um, currently it's 82 percent win rate yes that's correct but that doesn't mean anything this mean something but I will come back to that later um, I started to track stuff and then I was like okay now how can I improve this because I've also um, have backtested numbers that do not have uh, this high win rate and do not have anything sure. in the positive I've also found stuff that is very in the negative right and then um, when I hit uh, a backtesting project project where it was almost positive 
that's when I started to think, yeah, but what if I do this? And what if I move my stop loss to that? And what if I give it a little bit more wiggle room? And how do I track that? And well, that's when the puzzling came in. And I just started to track everything. I, I thought, well, okay, let, let's try you, for example, you do the, the 113XA thing. And I know that um, uh, Akil, for example, uses 1ATR for, for certain things, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what I like. Let's try it. So I just calculated all the stuff and I let the numbers speak for themselves. Um, what is in theory most profitable so you can use that for a strategy or not right you will see yep. later you just have the data for now and you will see later um so i did the same um for well actually this thing um as you can see this this one is uh, uh blown up to pieces am i still uh you guys still hear me yep, yep. okay um, let me see, is it over in this one? Because, yeah, here it is. Here I started to uh, create something that exactly measured out the wiggle room for a certain trades. So I know exactly how much FIP percentage of a leg or how much ATR it is. So I can use that for later for fine tuning my um, strategy on how I want to use it. Well, the same I did for targets and for original targets and then all the fun stuff became with the CTS stuff. So I back tested all that stuff as well to see uh, how that would influence my uh, CTS style trading because I am not a pattern trader. I'm, I'm a structure-based, bias-based trader that makes use of patterns. Sure. But I can trade them uh, basically in every way. I can trade them conventional, I can trade them as a structured trade, I can trade them TCT-wise or counter. Uh, that's how I made it fit. And I did not do that in one week. No. I, it took me a year to do that. Um, and this stuff um, made me do that. Um, having all this stuff, I even screenshot all my shit. Right? Yeah, see um, that. Sorry, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> I even screenshot my stuff, and um, so I can quickly see what I need to improve for my strategy to work. Um, yeah, um, I also need to have uh, stuff that I can work with that I can fine tune. But it was only after that I put it in the money management uh, sheet that you guys have um, where I was confronted with the possibilities and what it actually meant having those numbers and what it would mean if you trade this, right? In, no yeah. matter how much money you put in. So I thought, well, okay, let's, um, let's start it up as explained in the video because I have zero knowledge about this monster of a sheet. I do not even dare to touch it, right? <laughs> because you can easily mess up with, with, with things. So I put my stuff in there and um, um, I did that for the Aussie and for the, for the New Zealand. So this is one strategy on two pairs, right? Right. Okay. Um, so I put that all in there as it was um, before I went um, fine-tuning Maniac again. Um, so the numbers that you are about to see will be um, eventually a little bit higher. Uh, so this is also just raw stuff. And the things that I'm trading right now, uh, this is the back-tested work, right? So that's over a period of 2009 to 2018. So don't think, whoa, this number is crazy. No, this needs to be divided by nine. Yeah. But then it hit me. Because if you divide that number by nine, that was what I said 18 months ago. Hey, I'm happy. Yeah. If, if I have that, then, then I'm happy. And then I realized, but yeah, this is just 10% of what I'm about to do, right? Mm. 
I only need to get my, my facts straight, get the numbers in correct this time, and uh, let's go. So, um, well, this is what I'm trading right now, and if you ask me how many trades have you had, well, let's go. Uh, um, the next one that I still need to uh, log is the one that I'm currently in, so that will be three. There you go. <laughs> I've there had go. three <laughs> live trades, and money-wise, of course, that's nothing because I only trade in baby mode at this moment, but I created this one based on a 10K account because that is what most people can relate to, right? And um, I'm still playing with this with this sheet because I'm such a noob when it comes to this. Um, but this is about right. This is what about feels right and what I feel comfortable with. And uh, also, uh, I did a little bit of testing of where is the point where it becomes less. And, and well, um, regardless of that, this number, I can, I, I'm happy with that. If that means that is just a small portion of the work that I've done so far already can yield this, then yeah. I do not need to think top down. I will see later. Sure. You see? Yeah. And everybody can do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. It really is. It really is good to see, and and I think it's so valuable to show the other traders this the hard work that goes in on the back end. This absolutely is necessary. Um, people who don't take it this seriously are going to struggle, and I'll 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 tell you for why. Because one, the blood, sweat, and tears is there to keep you on track when you go live into the markets. Two, you're going to be very very good at spotting patterns that you've been testing. Uh, they're just going to pop out to you. And uh, three, you've got all of that data there that just says to you, this is your expectancy. This is your expected performance. So if you deviate outside of this, then start to panic. But if you don't, then don't. And you can take, well, Gabrielle's had three losing trades in a row there in 2014. So she can lose now, three losing trades in a row, and she's happy. She, she, she knows that that's normal, and it keeps you calm in, your, uh, in, in the markets. Um, one thing, Jim had a good question, Gabrielle. He said, talk about Ninja Trader data when you had incorrect data, because I remember you started testing and you realized you had oh. incorrect data. Oh, don't, oh, Jim, geez, did you have to bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think it would be valuable for people to hear that just so they don't make the same mistake. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, that was terrible. Okay. Um, so I started this backtesting thing, right? And I was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. I got greasy pizza and I got locked up and I went all woman cave and I started to backtest like a maniac. And um, Woman cave. Yeah, my woman cave. And, uh, well, I started to backtest like, um, like a maniac. And it was hilarious, though, because it was in a live room session with you, Jason, that I uh, sent you before the live room, I sent you a screenshot of my screen, right? I was testing something with the 2618, and I sent it to you like, hey, I'm going long there and there. And you were like, what? There, there's no 27. I'm like, yeah, there it is. Look, man. And I sent it to you, and I, I had the proof. And you're like, holy crap. She had a 2618, and I got a complete reversal the other way, right? Yep. And I'm like, huh? That's not a little bit off. That's like way off. This is weird. So um, at that moment, I kind of ignored it because I thought, well, that's probably me, or I don't know. I can't remember. I probably did something weird, or let's ignore it for now. And then it happened again. And then my candles were weird and my data was off and I'm like, okay, something is off here. So I contacted Ninja Trader and um, it was pretty fast, obvious that it had to do with my uh, demo account of Ninja Trader in combination with a demo account of FXCM. And um, it was uh, acknowledged by Ninja Trader that indeed the data is different and it has something to do with the way how they route it on their server park in the back end or something, right? Yeah. Something that we don't know about. But it's fake. 
<laughs> it's fake data, it's practice data, it's free data, so don't expect reliable data. If yeah. you want reliable data, that's how I learned after testing that the data was worthless. Um, I was confronted with the fact that I needed a real account and uh, a lifetime license, and I was like, crap, that's another couple of that I did not expect to uh, spend already because I do not plan to go live for next year or something. So mm. if I need to open up an account now, okay, well, let's do that then too, right? So yeah. I invested quite some money at that time. I, I paid already for a course. I had to buy a new computer. Uh, I had to open up a real account. And, well, that was quite a lot of money for someone that did not, plan to become a trader, right? So I really yeah. took it that serious that I'd rather get this education correct because that is value for my money, right? Um, but yeah, it was at this point where I started to realize when I saw numbers like this, then I'm like, okay, so no matter if it loses, no matter if it wins, it means basically ching, 41 pips in, in the end of the pot, right? I'm like, I'm going to be a trader. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Um, and I lost my red line here. <laughs> Help. <laughs> oh, right, the data. Yeah, the data was off. So if you need reliable backtesting, then you need really, uh, reliable data. Uh, therefore, you need a live account. Um, this was back in the day. So I don't know how it is today, if live uh, is different from demo today. I, I'm speaking about a year uh, back. So sure. um, I was uh, lucky again because I was able to open up account for, I don't know, I think I, I put in uh, 3,000 or something um, for uh, to open up a, a standard account uh, with FXCM um, because I'm in Europe. Um, and uh, I uh, know that nowadays the minimum that you have to put in is 10K to be able to open up a standard account that you can hook up with your Ninja Trader. But if you want to know exactly how it is, then uh, yeah, you need to contact them. Sure. Okay. Great stuff. So lots and lots of valuable nuggets there from your journey uh, so far and, and really a transparent demonstration of, of what it takes, you know, how, how serious you should be treating this as a business uh, if you're looking to not get eaten alive out there because it is a it is a dog fight it's it's not a place if you don't know what you're doing you're going to get eaten alive um so we've i've, I've really enjoyed this session and if i wasn't going to the maldives later on I'd, I'd i'd love to uh go all day but just before we uh wrap up gab just tell us what you're looking are you still looking to get to where you wanted to be originally or are you now saying because obviously now you, you know that you can trade, so whereas before you were thinking, I just wanted to have a better judgment on my where, what, how my money's being used, mm -hmm. how your goals have changed and what your, your ultimate goal is now going forward. Uh, then I need to go back to a pre-story first. Because when I, when I started my journey in week one, uh, someone uh, contacted me and, and said, hey, uh, I don't know where you've been, but you are a natural, and I'm like, oh, who's this dude, and what's he about? And then he asked me, what do you plan to do? Like, what do you mean, what do I plan to do? I plan to learn this stuff, and then um, use it as a sort of savings account, right? Um, but he was like, no, 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 I mean, are you going to do education, or are you going to do money management, or are you going to do signal service? And I'm like, what? What, what has he been smoking and where can I get some, right? <laughs> I had no idea what he was on about. I was like, is there more in, in after learning this stuff and, and doing this stuff, right? Um, to answer the question, I still don't know. Sure. I don't know. The only thing that I know is that I love this stuff beyond belief, that I'm addicted to this stuff that yep. because it, it, it intrigues me in a way that I'm like, oh man. But yeah, this is, um, if I did not get divorced, then I would have by now. Uh, this is uh, like true love. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, you, now have a, you now have a skill 
That's, yeah. that's the most important thing that you can then do what you like with. You know. Exactly, and I like so many things. I have problems with making decisions, and um, especially if. Well, this sounds a little bit arrogant, but if I like something, uh, I, ca I can actually pick what I want to do, then I can go full on that, right? Yeah. But right now, I have no idea what I like. I don't know. The only thing that I do know is uh, I want to get my shit done uh, uh, because I, uh, I want to do some more of this. And <laughs> I, have, I have no idea where it will lead me. I will see then. Um, um, for now, I'm a toddler when it comes to trading because I'm such a baby when it comes to this. Oh my God! Uh, but I'm live though. Um, I have no idea where this is going. My goal for this year is uh, to get uh, some more awesomeness in, uh, quantity-wise. So I want to add into my portfolio when it comes to live trading, and I do that every quarter. So I'm good to go to add in some uh, back-tested strategies that I'm fine-tuning at this moment, and I want to go live. Q2, so, uh, and I also want to file in my taxes before Q2, so <laughs> I've got some pressure here. Um, <laughs> that's short-term goal. Uh, End-term goal for this year, um, um, also quantity-wise when it comes to my live trading. I uh, want to be out of the baby mode then. Yeah. yeah. And where I am at that moment and what I'm doing at that moment, I will see then. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that story. And, and Gabrielle was a trader that, again, I, I've, I've known her for a while and I just know that she's going to be successful. Uh, it may come to a shock to some of you guys where she said that she's been training for 18 months and still isn't uh, fully through the course. That's a, a little bit longer than most, but she is very detail oriented. She is very deliberate about her actions. And I know that the one thing Gabrielle doesn't want to do is unnecessarily waste any money. And that's a mistake that I did with my trading. Um, it just, you know, when I decided to get educated, I invested in a course and I really went through the course with the wrong mindset. I went through with the mindset of how can I learn a strategy as quick as possible that will allow me to make money in the markets as quick as possible. And going through the course material with that mindset, although I went through everything I was supposed to do, I didn't go through looking for the right things. Instead of looking to learn and gain knowledge, I really just looked for the shortcut. And what ended up happening is, well, looking for that shortcut ended up extending my trading journey because I eventually started trading live. I started losing money, uh, had to figure out why, and I had to go all the way back, relearn all of the concepts and basically start over again with a much smaller uh, account size. And I know that's something that Gabrielle doesn't want to, want to do. But if you like the podcast, if you like what Gabrielle had to say, uh, do me a favor, just leave a comment under the YouTube video. I know she's going to like it. Uh, shoot me a, a message on Twitter as well. Uh, I'll make sure to forward it to her. And of course, if you guys are brand new uh, to the podcast, uh, subscribe. I'd love to have you as a regular member. We have tons of great content, 60 or 76 great episodes before this that you can binge listen to. And do me a favor. Uh, I'm trying to grow the show each and every week and, and reach out to more and more traders, get more and more traders into our our community and hopefully help more and more traders achieve their dream and it's a massive help whenever you guys just hit that share button whether it's a youtube share itunes share spotify share wherever you're listening to this at hit that share button it's a massive help in us growing the show and of course if you'd like to be more involved in a, a more personal level uh you know with gabrielle with myself with jason graystone with the community members here at tier one trading make sure you take advantage of that 14 day trial just go to tier one trading.com click 14 day trial and take advantage of those two weeks, right? You have access to a training course, you have access to software, you have access to live rooms, you can come into the accountability sessions, you can, um, you can take part in the community chat, right? Even if you know you're not gonna be there big picture and you only have two weeks, immerse yourself in everything possible within those two weeks and you'll come out much more knowledgeable than what you were going in. So I'll look forward to seeing you guys on the chat. Until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.